Daniel Bernoulli developed an equation that expresses the Bernoulli's principle quantitatively. We can derive the equation using Newtonian mechanics. Consider a steady flow of incompressible fluid with negligible viscosity through a pipe with the two horizontal sections of different cross-sectional areas and different heights. Suppose that in a certain time interval, the fluid travels a distance delta L1 on the left side and delta L2 on the right side. So this part of the fluid is uh, over here in this region at the beginning of the time interval, and it is in this region at the end of the time interval. Because it is a steady flow, this part of the fluid is effectively unchanged. To compare the before and after, we only need to look at the net effect of the flow, which means uh, this part of the fluid before and that part of the fluid after. Remember the work energy theorem we learned earlier in this course? The work done by the non-conservative forces equal to the change in mechanical energy. There are two non-conservative forces acting on this part of the fluid. The pressure times area on this side and the pressure times area on that side. The work done is the force times the displacement, and since over here the force and the displacement they are in the same direction, the work then is positive. But over here, the force, the pressure times area, is in the opposite direction to the displacement. So this force does negative work. So the total work done by the non-conservative force would equal to the force P1A1 times the displacement delta L1 plus the negative work done by this force, P2A2 times the delta L2. And this should equal to the mechanical energy at the end, E2, minus the mechanical energy at the beginning, E1. If I move E1 to the left side and move this term to the right side, I would get that equation. At the beginning and the end, we have both 1 half mv squared and mgy. So E1 is 1 half mv1 squared plus mgy1, and E2 is 1 half mv2 squared plus mgy2. Because the fluid is incompressible, that means the same mass fluid would occupy the same volume. The volume of this cylinder over here is the cross-sectional area times the length of the cylinder. So it's A1 times delta L1 should equal to the volume over here, which is A2 times delta L2. Because the volume A1 delta L1 equals to the volume A2 delta L2, I can divide by A1 delta L1 on this side and divide by A2 delta L2 on the other side, and these two sides will still be equal. And that means that the A1 delta L1 would cancel for this term. So this term will be left with P1, and that term will be left as P2. And over here, I would have mass divided by the volume, mass divided by the volume, which will give me density. And same thing over here. So this equation is going to become P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho GY1 equals to P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared plus rho GY2. So we can say that the pressure plus 1 half rho V squared plus rho GY on the two sides are equal. Or we can say P plus 1 half rho V squared plus rho GY is a constant. These two are called Bernoulli's equation. And we derive the equation from the conservation of energy. The work energy theorem is the conservation of energy. Notice that these terms, they come from these energy terms divided by the volume. So pressure is some sort of energy per volume. And this is the kinetic energy per volume, gravitational potential energy per volume. And these three energy per volume terms added together on the two sides should be equal. If we have a pipe 
that doesn't involve height change, which means y1 equals to y2, the y is a constant. That means p plus 1 half rho v squared should be a constant. That means the side with a higher v should have a lower pressure, which is consistent with the Bernoulli's principle. If somehow the pressure is kept a constant, then the faster flow speed would be associated with a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. And of course, in real fluid flow, with the exception of superfluid, there is always at least some viscosity. Viscosity is internal friction between adjacent parts of a fluid. There can also be friction between moving fluid and its contact surface like the friction we studied in motion of solids. These factors cause the fluids to lose mechanical energy to heat, which means viscosity can cause the sum of these terms to decrease as the fluid flows.